Well, hello and welcome to this week's episode. I hope you've had a fantastic week and have had plenty of opportunities to practice your RP British accent. So without further ado, let's head over to Section 1. Section 1 Four brilliant ways to use your British accent when you don't have a speaking partner to practice with. Want to practice your British accent but don't live in the UK and don't have access to a speaking partner? Here's a few exercises to try to give your speaking voice a daily workout. 1. Describe your typical day in your RP British accent. Number 2. Can you name all the objects you can see around you now? Number 3. Set the subtitles to English on the next programme you watch. Pick a character and mimic and repeat their dialogue in one or two of the scenes. Get the emotion and feeling of the English as well as the correct pronunciation of each of the words. And number four. Do you play games? Whether it's on your smartphone, your PS4 or Xbox, provide a running commentary as you play the game. Even better, record yourself as you do so. Play it back and give yourself some feedback. Have you any other ideas for exercising your British accent? Do let me know. Section 2 Should I pronounce the T in often? Do you say often or often? Until the 17th century... Often was pronounced with the T sound. Often. The T then fell out of favour, and the pronunciation without the T came to predominate in speech. At some point, the spelling pronunciation of often became popular, probably alongside the arrival of mandatory schooling and universal literacy. Spelling pronunciation is the pronunciation of a word according to its spelling. As the use of the T sound persisted, this pronunciation became so common that it was considered as normal as the standard variant of often. Some people think it's really posh to say the T sound often, and others think it's posh when you omit it often. It's perfectly acceptable to use either pronunciation. Use whichever version you like the sound of. I find myself, I use both. I tend to pronounce the T often if I want to use it as an emphasis for something. Whichever you choose, be confident in your pronunciation. Section 3 How can I speak with a perfect British accent in a short time? Now, of course, the only response to this question is that you can't, and perfection shouldn't really be what you're aiming for anyway. Not only will seeking perfection leave you frustrated and potentially hold you back, but you'll actually fail at sounding like a native British English speaker, which I assume would be your ultimate goal. Native speakers' conversations tend on the messy side. We don't speak in complete sentences with perfect grammar and diction. We speak with contractions, idiomatic phrases and sayings. We miss out sounds in words and we run words into each other. However, you can improve your accent by working on your pronunciation of the different vowel and consonant sounds and hear a big difference within a short time. Although not providing perfection, it can help stop those obvious pronunciation errors that mark you out as a non-native RP speaker. You can then spend some time working on the other conversational skills of linking and connected speech, chunking words together so they sound like natural phrases, and learning the myriad of English idioms. So do enjoy not being a perfectionist. Section 4 Mastering Clear Communication Insights from Alan Alder 
Have you ever found yourself in a conversation where you're articulating a complex idea, only to realise that your audience is more confused than when you started? We've all been there. You're not alone. Alan Alda, renowned for his role on the sitcom MASH, has ventured beyond the world of acting to become a public speaker, a science enthusiast, an advocate for effective science communication. In his journey, he's accumulated a playbook of strategies that can be applied to various conversations, from scientific discussions to -to heart-to-heart talks. He has three particular recommendations. Number one, limit your points to three. The human brain has finite capacity for short-term memory. While the commonly cited number is seven, recent research suggests it's more limited, maxing out at three to five items. Aldo recommends keeping your conversation points to a maximum of three. This allows both you and your conversation partner to focus on the core ideas without overwhelming short-term memory. Remember the time before cell phones when people memorised seven-digit phone numbers? Even then, they often chunked the information into smaller parts, so the area code, the prefix and the subscriber number. Similarly, breaking down your conversation into digestible chunks can aid comprehension and retention. Recommendation number two. Explain in three different ways. Complex ideas can be challenging to grasp, Alder's advice is to approach them from different angles. If you're finding it difficult to express a concept, try explaining it in three different ways. Metaphors are an effective tool. They tap into existing neural patterns and make abstract ideas relatable. The use of metaphor has been highlighted by educators as a key tactic for explaining complex concepts. For instance... A physics teacher might explain the concept of the expanding universe by likening it to how raisin bread expands during baking. This approach builds a three-dimensional view of the idea, making it easier to understand. Other strategies include providing examples, visuals, changing the frame of reference and offering this-not-that comparisons. Recommendation number three, embrace repetition. Repetition is a powerful communication tool. It helps transfer information from short-term to long-term memory. Alger suggests making important points three times to reinforce their significance. Spaced repetition, revisiting and applying information over time, is especially effective for learning complex subjects. While this approach is valuable in close-knit relationships where ideas can be revisited across multiple conversations, time constraints might limit its use in other relationships. Nevertheless, any repetition signals the importance of the information. Consider how influential speeches and songs employ repetition to drive home key messages. Alder emphasises that while these tips are valuable, They only take you so far. Attempting to script conversations according to a formula might hinder your efforts. True communication, according to Alder, is about connection, not rhetoric. The ultimate goal is to establish a deep enough connection to understand when to slow down, repeat key points, or offer alternative explanations. In the end, building genuine connections is the foundation for effective communication, enabling you to navigate conversations with authenticity and clarity. If you find that your accent is also hindering your communication, then the British Accent Bundle can help you speak more clearly and get your points across more easily. Can I just take a moment to break in here? You can get access to quizzes and members-only posts when you become a member of the British Accent Bundle at learningbritishaccent.com.
And of course, you also get access to both the British Accent Training Courses. That's the RP British Accent Pronunciation Course and the Ultimate RP British Accent Learning Resource. You can get all of this for under £7 per month. So if you select the yearly membership option at only £79, you can get immediate access to all these resources. So for less than £7 per month, you can make so much improvement to your speaking voice and gain so much confidence in your fluency and conversation skills. So why not gift yourself this opportunity? Section 5 Top 10 tips to grow your British accent. So here's a few ideas to get started. Number one, listen to native speakers. One of the best ways to improve your accent is to listen to native speakers and pay attention to the way they pronounce words and phrases. You can find recordings of native speakers online or through language learning resources and, of course, through my British Accent Bundle. Number two, practice saying words and phrases out loud. Repeating words and phrases out loud can help you get a feel for the rhythm and sound of the British accent. Start with simple words and phrases and gradually work your way up to more complex ones. Number three, use resources like accent training videos and podcasts. There are many resources available online, not just this one, and they can help you improve your accent. Go to learningbritishaccent.com for tons of audio and video resources. Number four, work with a language tutor or a speech coach. Working with a tutor or coach can be an effective way to get that personalised feedback and guidance on improving your accent. Number five, pay attention to the stress and intonation of words. In the British accent, the stress and intonation of words can be different from other accents, Pay attention to the way native speakers stress and intonate words and practice replicating it. Number six, practice linking words. In the British accent, words are often linked together, especially when they end with a vowel sound and the next word begins with a vowel sound. Practice linking words to improve the flow of your speech. Number seven, Use the International Phonetic Alphabet, the IPA, to help you pronounce words correctly. The IPA is a standardised system for representing the sounds of languages. You can use it to learn the correct pronunciation of words in the British accent. Number eight, practice your accent with a native speaker. If you know someone who is a native speaker of RP British English, ask them to help you practice your accent they can give you feedback and help you improve. Number nine, immerse yourself in the language. Surrounding yourself with the language can help you become more familiar with it and improve your accent. Consider watching British TV shows, listening to British music or reading British literature to immerse yourself in the language. And number ten, be patient. Improving your accent takes time and practice. Be patient with yourself and don't get discouraged if you don't see improvement right away. As long as you keep practising and seeking feedback, you will improve over time. If you're looking to make improvements to your speaking voice in 2024, why not get my British Accent training course at learningbritishaccent.com slash bundle. Thank you ever so much for listening to this week's podcast. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And if you're watching the football on Sunday, uh, enjoy it. Hope it's not too stressful. And I shall see you again next week. Thanks for joining me. See you soon. Bye bye. Welcome to the Unlit Life. It's this place where you feel free, like enjoying a low-key get-together with friends instead of a wild night on the town style of free, when you can enjoy a moment with Blue Vapor just because. You know, the everyday doesn't have to feel so everyday. With Blue E-Cigs, you can get stuff done and still have fun. And when we let ourselves get unlit, we start really living. Blue, get unlit. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Underage sale prohibited. Blue is a trademark of Fonum Holdings 4BV. Copyright 2022, Fonum US, LLC. 
It's time to gather loved ones together for all the holiday's best spread. Lynn's has great prices on all your favorite Thanksgiving items. From delicious turkey with all the fixings to mashed potatoes and yummy pies, we have everything you need to create your perfect Thanksgiving dinner. Whether it's cooking the traditional meal, completely store-bought, or a combination of both, your best holiday meal starts here. Learn more and start shopping today at lynnsgrocery.com. Lynn's, where delicious begins.